The RS-485 Modbus RTU connection is a two-wire twisted pair. The communication parameters must be the same for the master and all of the slave units. In Modbus serial communication like Modbus RTU, the controller sending the commands is called the master. The slave is the controller that responds to the commands from the master. In Modbus TCP or Ethernet, the master is referred to as the client and the slave is the server. Sometimes these terminologies are mixed up. We can start the Click PLC programming software twice and connect to the master and the slave PLCs. Using the main menu, select Setup, COM port. Select port 3. This is the RS-485 port on the Click PLC CPU. Modbus protocol is the default for this port selection. The baud rate, parity, and stop bit communication parameters must match the master and the slave PLC settings. We are using the highest baud rate setting on the Click PLC. Typically, the longer the physical cable runs, the slower you need to set the baud rate. Depending on your environment and the cable length, you may have to experiment with this rate. Node address, in our case, will be left the default for one for both controllers. The master PLC click does not have to have a node address because it's the only one initiating the commands. If we have a multiple slave controllers, then each slave would have to have a unique number. This way, the master PLC would know which slave click PLC to send re the request to. Our click PLC network ports are now set up. As mentioned, all communications are initiated from the master PLC using the Modbus protocol. We will now look at the ladder logic program for the Click Master RTU PLC. Our main ladder logic program will call a subroutine called Click PLC Serial RS45. This subroutine will handle all the communications to the Click controllers. The first two lines of the controller will use the send instructions to write information into the slave unit. You will see that the slave ID is set to zero. This unique mode will broadcast the message to all Modbus RTU slaves on the network. Since we only have one slave, we could have also used the value of one that was set because this is the only node address that we have. Double click on the send instruction and we can look at the this in more detail. The Modbus function code is set for 15. This is used to write multiple coils. Our addressing type is set for Modbus 984 addressing, and the starting slave address is 16485. The starting master address is C101. Call up the address picker from the main menu program. Select display Modbus addresses in the bottom right side of the address picker window. This will display the Modbus addresses for all the memory locations in the Click PLC. You will see that 16485 is the address for C101. Looking back at the send instruction, we are also sending 50 bits. This means that bits C101 C150 from the master PLC are being sent to bits C101 to C150 of the slave PLC. Status flags are then set for the send instruction. We will use these for timing of the communication. The first scan is used on the first rung to send the first 50 bits. The output flags on the first send instruction will trigger the second send instruction. Our next send instruction will use the right multiple registers. The starting slave address will be 400101, which is DS101 in the Click PLC we will write 50 registers. Registers DS101 to DS150 from the master PLC will be written to DS101 to DS150 of the slave PLC. The flags from the second send instruction will now trigger the receive instruction. The receive instruction function code will read coil status. This will read 50 bits starting at 16535, which is address C151 of the slave PLC and write them to the master starting at C151. The output flags of this receive instruction will trigger the next receive instruction. We'll have two send and two receive instructions that will now pass 100 bits and words between the two click PLCs. 
we will read 50 registers starting at 400151, address DS151 of the Slave PLC, and write them into the Master PLC at DS151. The output flags of this instruction will trigger the first send instruction again. The sending and receiving instruction cycle uses the flag bits. If the cycle stops, we need to start it cycling again. The leading edge of the last receive instruction triggers an internal bit. The normally closed of this bit will then start a timer set for 1000 milliseconds or one second. The leading edge of this timer bit will then start the first instruction again in parallel to the first scan instruction. We will now ensure that the information will continue to be updated. A heartbeat is sent to the first bit we write to the click slave PLC. This is used to tell the slave if communication is active. Even though we are cycling above with our commands, it may not mean that the information is being sent. There could be errors on a line and the slave PLC will need to know this and react. The click master PLC will also need to know if the information is valid. We are looking at the leading edge of each of the RS-485 error communication bits. This will trigger an internal bit. The normally closed of this bit will then turn on a timer. The timer is set for 500 milliseconds or one half a second. And if the timer done bit is on, then communications are okay. We can then use this in other areas of our program. Returning to the main ladder logic of our click master PLC, we will implement some code to determine the throughput of our communications. When input X001 from our push button switch is on, this will turn on bit C102 and start a timer. Our remote click slave will have the following code. This will read C102 and then set C151. When bit C151 is read from the click master PLC, the value in the timer is then copied to DS1. DS1 will then contain the throughput value in milliseconds. The click slave PLC does not need any code for communications to the master other than a heartbeat to, to ensure that transmission is valid. This is an asynchronous communication from the master. The heartbeat pulse comes from the master bit C101. Using the leading edge of this bit to turn on an internal bit, we use this normally closed in internal bit as the condition for the timer. If the timer times out and the timer done bit comes on, we know communications has been lost. Call up the data view under monitor in the program tab of the navigation window on both the master and the slave click PLCs. The master will write the first block of bits. You can see the heartbeat bit pulsing. The slave will write the next block of bits so the master can read. The following two blocks contain registers, one for the master to write and one for the slave to write. Changing the bit or word status in one controller will reflect in the other. Download the program and documentation from the link below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.